Sage 50 includes a 12-period income statement as one of the standard reports. But recently I had someone ask for a 12-period balance sheet. And as I, I was explaining how they could make one, I realized it would be a perfect example to show how flexible and easy to use the Sage 50 Financial Statement Designer is. So let's take a look at, at how easily we can do this. You're going to start by going to the Reports and Forms menu and choose Financial Statements. And we're going to use that standard income 12 period um, as part of our, our basis for building the new report because we can copy building blocks from various reports and use them in new reports. So with that selected, I'm going to click the Design button up at the top. And so here you can see the 12 columns defined there. So I'm going to right click there on the column description and I'm going to choose Copy. And we'll close that. If it happens to ask you if you want to save your changes, just tell it no. Then you want to pick the balance sheet format that you want to use as your starting point. I'm going to use the standard balance sheet. So now we'll click Design there. And I'm going to right click on the column description again and I'm going to paste in the column description from the income statement. Obviously we'll have to make some changes coming from an income statement to a balance sheet. Let's take a quick look at how the original column description is set up. So you can double click on there or you can right click and choose properties. And we can see that the first column, well each row in this table represents a column in our financial statement. So the first column uh, brings in the account descriptions and the second column brings in balances. So let's cancel that and let's look at the properties for the new column description that we brought in. Here we can see that the first column is the same, it brings in the account descriptions. But now each of these is bringing in activity instead of balance. So we need to change each of these to balance. You can do it with a mouse but the fastest way is just to click in each field and then type the letter B. You just want to make sure that you go all the way down. Don't forget to go sc scrolling to get to the others. Now while we're in here, let's also look a little bit at the time frame. And I'll explain more later why this is significant. But you can see that period 12, the time frame is set to current. If we go back to period 11, it's current minus 1. Period 10 is current minus 2. And so on all the way back through each month. So let's click OK to save that change. And now that we've got this column description set the way we want it to be, we can get rid of the original. So we'll just right click on it and choose Delete. Now at this point you can click the Save button and give this a new name such as 12 period balance sheet. And you can put in a longer description if you want. We'll click Save. Now this will show up in our list of custom reports. You can tell by the blue wrench that it's a custom report. So let's display this we'll, and let's go to the options. And it's very important, in order for this report to work, you have to set your range, assuming that you're on a calendar year, from December 1st to December 31st. If you're on a fiscal year, it would be whatever the last period is in your fiscal calendar. But the reason this matters is because when we were looking at the column definitions, that the 12th column is defined as the current period. And the current period is whatever date range you, you select here. Then every column prior to that, so periods 1 through period 11, are one month back, one period back, from whatever column 12 is defined as. So that's why it's very important to always define this as December or the last period in your fiscal year. But so that's all there is to it. That shows you how, how flexible and easy to use the Financial Statement Designer is and how quickly you can set up a 12-period balance sheet.